When I set out to make a list of my 10 favorite classroom tools, I found that I really couldn't narrow it down, and so what you're getting is my 15 favorite classroom tools. If you're a new elementary art teacher, you're going to find a lot of really useful tips here. If you've been teaching a while, you might even find something else you didn't even know you needed. Now, first off, I'm not talking about the things that you should already have in your classroom that your school should have already provided. I'm talking about those things that maybe nobody thinks of unless somebody tells you, hey, it would be a good idea if you had this. And there are many of those things on this list, many that other teachers have recommended to me. First, I'm going to talk about classroom management, the things that help your students stay on track, because Really, none of these other tools are going to be any use to you unless you get everybody focused and working in the right direction from the beginning. I love my big red countdown timer. It sits where everybody can see it. It moves on its own so they can see how much time they have left. When it gets down to zero, that's when they know it is cleanup time. The only problem I have with this is getting the little ones to keep their hands off it. So ideally, you should have it up high. But really, it is super durable. It has been knocked down so many times. Batteries have been knocked out, and it just keeps on ticking. My wireless doorbell system is the cornerstone of my classroom management. I ring it to start the class. I ring it to end the class. And I ring it any time. I just need everybody to stop and listen. When they hear it, they know it's time to get into ready position. Which brings me to my friend, Mona Lisa. Now, before you were an elementary art teacher, you may have never noticed that Mona Lisa is always in ready position. Her eyes are forward, her mouth is closed, her hands are folded, and she is sitting down. I use the ready bell, my doorbell, to signal that it's time to get into Mona Lisa ready position. We do the, this at the beginning of class and the end of class. And having an actual poster is really helpful in pointing to Mona Lisa and saying, this is what I expect. I don't use this the whole year um, just because it's a lot to manage, but I use these tap lights a lot in the beginning of the year and also with the young children. Uh, again, the problem with this is just getting them to keep their hands off of it because, of course, the colors change if you tap them. I use the red when it's time to stop and listen at the beginning of the class. We change to green when it's work time and we use the yellow when there's a five minute warning. The great thing about this is there's a remote control so I can go around just changing the colors on the tables uh, without actually having to reach over and tap it. This is especially useful when some tables have been given permission to go on work time or other tables are on a warning system. Next up are the utility tools. These are things that just keep the whole operation running like clockwork. Just everyday tools to have in your cabinet. The first is dog bowls for the paint water. My first week of school, someone recommended that I use dog bowls for the water, and I have never been sorry. They're heavy duty, sturdy, they can take a beating, it doesn't matter if they get dirty, and because they have such a low center of gravity, they almost never spill. I also have a couple of stacks. I probably have maybe 24 of these sturdy plastic cafeteria trays. These can be used to hand out supplies. I use them as trays when I'm printing for the ink, the ink and the brayers. I put my clay on it to dry when I put it up on shelves. They're just really useful, and when you're not using them, they stack up easily and are put away till you need them the next time. Trauma scissors, we don't call them trauma scissors in the classroom, we call them super scissors. They cut everything. We keep them in a special drawer. I don't have them out all the time, but of course the kids know where they are. And whenever I see someone trying to cut cardboard or wire or anything tough, I say, listen, Put down those little baby scissors. 
let's use the trauma scissors. And they're always delighted at how strong they are, how easy they cut, but they're not at all dangerous. They have these rounded blunt ends and are just really easy for children to use as powerful as they are. Rubber dish pans. Of course, there are too many uses for rubber dish pans, more than I can name, but you will be happy you have them. I keep mine in a big stack just under uh, a counter and I can pull them out whenever I need to distribute something or clean something, and I keep my towels in them as well. Now, you definitely need a quality electric pencil sharpener. Now, when I first became a teacher, I bought an Exacto School Pro, and it was terrific. Uh, I still use them. Uh, I, as a matter of fact, I had two in my room, and I, unlike some teachers, I let my kids use the electric pencil sharpeners. Uh, this is really easy to use, and it's very dur durable. It hardly ever jams, and when it does jam, it's easy enough to clean out. In my room, we use one, two, three, out. That is how long you can sharpen a pencil. So I was very happy with that until my district sent me this thing. This thing is like a super sonic jet. You put a pencil in there and like, it's finished. I love this. I didn't even let the kids know I had this for a full year, but I now let the kids use it. And again, I have to watch them because once they see how this eats up pencils, they will just stand in line to use it. But it's one, two, three, out. Although this thing only needs like a one out. Now this year, I'm teaching part-time on a cart in teachers' classrooms, which means I don't have my electric pencil sharpener and I don't want to use theirs. So I thought I really need to have an electric pencil sharpener that I can carry around, but you know, they're never heavy duty enough. Uh, you know, they never last. And I didn't want some weak battery operated thing. I bought this and it actually plugs into the computer to get its power, but it's also really funny and the kids just can't get enough of it. So again, I have to limit usage to it. When you put the pencil in, you don't have to hold the pencil. You just sort of place it in the top and it sucks it down into the chamber, sharpens it to a razor sharp point and then pops it back out. Once the kids see this, they're like, I want to sharpen pencils. So it's really great if you uh, are on a cart or moving around and can't bring a regular electric pencil sharpener with you. Now, if you have been an art teacher for, I don't know, any more than a couple of weeks, you have probably encountered the needs for some basic tools. Now, I foolishly thought, as you might, that either um, the custodians or maintenance could help me with things that I needed tools for. Not so. The custodians don't carry them, and the maintenance people, you have to put in a work order, and who knows when they're going to come. So I recommend everyone keep basic tools. Hammer, pliers, screwdriver, wire cutters. You may go months without ever needing one of these, but when you do, have them handy. You don't have to call the secretary. You don't have to put in a work order. Just fix it. This next couple of things are things I actually use in my lessons. I find them very useful and not only do I use them in my lessons, but I keep them out for Open Studio and the kids really love them. Stencils. I've got a lot of stencils. I mean, I really have a lot of stencils. I keep buying stencils because the kids love the stencils so much. I use them in some lessons. Uh, this is uh, a negative space project that we do with oil pastels, and then we use the stencils to cut out the figures. I also have alphabet stencils, which have all sorts of uses. Uh, this is a um, applique a project. This is actually a seventh grader doing this one. We use the alphabet stencils for all sorts of things. But the reason I'm such a fan of stencils is it really gives, especially the younger children, a real sense of confidence. Uh, when they don't have the motor control yet, they haven't developed the skills, and a lot of them fall into the mindset of, I can't, that's too hard for me, I don't know how. When they discover the magic of a stencil, they can get over that 
a lack of motor control and really move on to thinking about what they can do with this new skill that allows them to draw any shape they want. Along those same lines is rubbing plates. It's something I do use in my lessons, but it's also something that the kids just like to have because it just opens up so many possibilities for them. I use them in kindergarten and first grade for different drawing exercises, of course, when we're talking about texture, and I also use it with Play-Doh texture. So they're real handy to have. The final section is the things I have just for fun because I'm a fun teacher and the room is fun. Paper crimpers. I've never even seen a paper crimper, but someone donated the one on the left uh, to my room with a bunch of old supplies they were donating. And I'm telling you, these kids cannot get enough of crimping. And of course I wanted to buy more, but man, they're expensive. They're like, you know, $15 a piece. So I didn't buy more for a couple years, but they were always lined up to use this one crimper. This year I had a little extra money, so I bought four more of the ones on the left. And not only do they have the wavy, but they have uh, uh, three other different uh, really cool patterns. And these work really well with foil, uh, if you have a foil paper. So I don't really have a specific lesson that uses these, although we do do a Matisse collage challenge every year. But mostly I just keep these because the kids just love using them. Along those same lines, the paper punches. I don't have any lesson that specifically uses the paper punches, but they feel so empowered by the paper punches that they feel are almost magical that I love to watch them use the crimpers, the rubbing plates, the punches, and just let that ignite ideas in their head of all the things they could do with these things that they now know how to make. Finally, the class camera. This is an old camera of mine, not especially as expensive or special, that I keep in the classroom and I use it, I let the students use it. It's old and it doesn't really matter to me if it gets broken, but so far, five years in, it's still in perfect shape. I use it to take pictures of the kids and post on Class Dojo. But I also let the kids use it to take pictures of each other and pictures of me. They absolutely love it. And again, you have to sort of monitor whose turn it is to have the camera. I like it because it doesn't show the pictures right away. So they don't get obsessed with going back and looking at the pictures that they just took. They just take the pictures, hand the camera to me, I can delete all the nonsense, and save the good ones. So what would you add to this list? I would love to know, and all the other art teachers out there would love your tips as well. Leave them in the comments.